There are a number of different types of information systems depending upon different management levels, as well as based on information requirements of an organization. The most important category of information systems is Transaction Processing Systems, TPS. For example, Sales Order Entry System, Payroll System, and Student Admission System. It is used by lower management or operational management level. It is an front-end system. So it is the only system that is used to enter the user inputs and used to record daily routine transaction. As you know, transaction is any event occurred in the organization. And it can be financial or non-financial. The main data source for TPS is only from internal source. Here, we will discuss the main characteristics of transaction processing systems. TPS is used for predefined and structured decision making. So the situation that will be handled by TPS will be defined and repetitive. For example, selection of employee for a particular job. Normally, TPS is used by operational management. Most of the reports at operational level are in detail format that can be used to investigate or audit a transaction in detail. Whereas TPS is not able to perform deep analyze, so it is without any analytical ability. You can see in this diagram, an example of payroll TPS. The green rectangle is TPS that is connected with database. Employee data is entered from the internal source. A screen shows the output given by TPS. And its output further will be utilized by government agencies. Management information systems and other systems such as gender ledger. Second category is management information systems. It is used to manage and control various managerial activities in the organization. So it is helpful for managers in performing and coordinating their activities. For example, sales team management system, inventory control system, financial reporting system, etc. The main source of its data is TPS. Here we will discuss main features of MIS. It is also used for routine and structured decision making by middle managers. It can perform little analytical capability to summarize data, so it creates summary reports. The most important feature of MIS is the use of it to analyze current performance of organization. In this general MIS diagram, you can see data from different TPS are accumulated in MIF files. From where MIS system will generate summary reports, presented to middle managers by a terminal screen. The most important category of information systems is Decision Support System, DSS. For example, Voyage Estimation System, Financial Portfolio System. Google Map is also a DSS. It is used to analyze any problem and returns number of options to find the best feasible solution for the problem. In decision-making process, DSS plays an important and supporting role for the managers as it will be helpful for decision-making process. It is also used by middle managers, but for non-routine and semi-structured problems. Such type of decisions are somehow difficult to solve. For example, 
Delivery a product is a kind of semi-structured decision in which some of the functions in decision-making are defined and cleared, but others are undefined and unstructured. As DSS will provide support for decision-making process, for this purpose, various analytical and mathematical models are embedded in it. So it has analytic capability to analyze the problem and returns number of options for its solution. It is also used to analyze future trend and able to forecast and predict the future data. It is normally used to ad hoc reports which will be generated on runtime. This is the general DSS system diagram. Analytical models perform its analysis using DSS database that is collection of internal source from TPS and MIS and external source. User will perform various queries on runtime and view the results on the screen. For the top or executive managers, Executive Support Systems, ESS, generates a graphical view of overall system data. It is a comprehensive system that is a dashboard to show the overall picture of the organizational data. For example, Policy Making Information System, Speculative Information System, and technical consultancy system. The main source of data for executive support systems, MIS, DSS, and data from external source. It is used for non-routine and unstructured decision-making, a situation that is totally undefined and doubtful. So performing decision will not be an easy task. For example, launching a new product, where all of the elements, required for such decision, are undefined and unstructured. The most important capability of this system is the ability to convert numerical data in graphical data. As graphical data is easy to understand, and it will be easy for top manager to perform unstructured decisions. Most of the reports generated by executive support systems are in graphical format or in the form of charts. DSS also provides an opportunity to managers to give their own insight in solving a problem. So it can also evaluate the opinion given by managers in solving the problem. Here, you can see a view of dashboard provided by ESS it is combination of various charts and graphs to present various information. So manager can able to get an overall picture. And it supports to perform an unstructured decision. In this modern and informational era, most of the businesses prefer to use enterprise apps. All of the system types discussed in last part will be used by specific management level or functional area. Some of the systems can support cross-functional areas, but they are still used by one management level only. Here we are going to discuss enterprise applications, which can be used by all of the management levels, and also support functional as well as cross-functional business process across the management levels. So these system can record all of the transactions in organization, either functional or cross-functional. And it will be accessible by all of the management levels at the same time. Same system can also be accessed by external users such as suppliers, customers, etc. Simply you can say it is a central system in the organization, which links all of the management levels with each other. These system are designed by various vendors, in which Microsoft, Oracle, and SAP are most popular. These vendors have designed enterprise applications for various industries, which can be customized to fulfill the specific requirements of an organization. There are different types of enterprise applications. In this diagram, you can see four enterprise systems within the ovals on the management levels. A vertical oval, covering over all of the management levels and functional areas. 
In this oval there are two systems, enterprise systems and knowledge management systems. Both of these systems are only accessible by internal users. In horizontal oval, there are two systems supply chain management systems and customer relationship management systems. You can see, this oval expands outside the boundaries of management levels. It means, these two systems can access by internal as well as external users. Now, we will discuss all of these systems in detail. First of all, enterprise systems, also known as ERP systems. Enterprise systems are used record data from all of the functional areas for all of the management levels. So it is not specific to any functional area or management level. In this way, it would be helpful to coordinate organizational activities in various business process. Every manager, irrespective of his management level, can get instant information about that transaction. Overall working among the managers becomes easy and effective now by using enterprise systems. Enterprise systems store data in a central repository or database, which will be accessible to everyone in the organization. Enterprise systems will give an overall picture of the organization, as same system is available everywhere in different level and functional areas. When everybody has access of data, then it will return quick response by every stakeholder in that particular business process and also improve productivity and efficiency of organization. Now managers at every level of management can able to perform all types of decisions quickly and without wasting time. They are also in position to collaborate in group to perform group decision making to solve unstructured problems. As everyone has quick access to information and able to perform various activities effectively, then it will be good for long-term planning. So the organizational productivity will increase in long run. Next enterprise application is Supply Chain Management Systems, SCM. The main purpose of SCM is to have a strong association with vendors or suppliers to improve the level of inventory and efficient delivery of products to its destination. It can be helpful to effectively align orders from customers with the production. In this way, customer will get their order on time, as vendors are promptly informed about the required products. So there would be no delay due to SCM. Now we can manage an optimal level of inventory. As production is linked with inventory, as inventory level falls below the reorder level, production department starts working to manufacturing those items, as well as order to vendors for missing inventory or raw material required. Another most important use of supply chain management system is to transmit right amount of inventory at desired destination, such as store, warehouse, etc. In this way, a balanced stock is maintained at various locations or branches. It will also helpful to shift inventory from one location to other, if it is an urgent need there. The main objective behind all of these activities is delivery of products with less time and lowest possible cost. So it helpful in reducing the cost of production. CRM, or Customer Relationship Management Systems are important systems in the organization. It is used to coordinate all of the activities with customer and to perform business operations to satisfy them. It is also accessed by customers, who are external for organization. So customers will be communicated immediately without wasting time, and customers have their complaints and inquires by using same system. In this way, this system helps to generate more sale, as number of returning customers increasing more due to effective communication with them. It is also helpful to identify target customers by managing leads. 
In this way all of the communication is recorded with leads in the system. And they are well informed about all of their communications with our sales team. So converting leads into customers becomes more and more. Managers also plan effective marketing campaigns by using CRM. They can set the target areas to run their campaigns. They can also view the progress of each of the campaign and its effectiveness in the system. The most important for satisfied customers is the way to handle their complaints. CRM is a quick way to get complaints from customers and moves it to relevant person for its solution. So customers will get response in time without any delay and their satisfaction level will definitely improve. By using CRM, managers are also able to categorize customers into various groups. In this way, they can have discounts and offers for their returning customers. And it helps them to retain these customer with them forever. Knowledge management system is the main system to explore new knowledge and investigate the situation to learn its various dimensions by analyzing data from internal as well as external sources. It will capture and process knowledge and expertise of people in such way that will be helpful for others in performing their business process in more effective and intelligent way. System explores new ideas and methods and tries to improve already used methods. The ultimate result of it is the increased productivity and efficiency. It captures expertise of others such as doctors, engineers, etc. And then applies their expertise to solve problem problems automatically. And also this knowledge will be assets for others working in the organization. To make your product unique and different from your competitors, this system constantly tries to find new innovative and unique ideas and designs to improve the products and services or design another creative product or service which is not already offered by competitors. In this way, this system tries to maintain or improve the position of the organization in the market.